but join us back if you're back we're back <laughs> so uh, after what we were talking about with with giving money and 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 currency specifically I know um, sometimes conversations I have with uh, some Christians or again people who volunteer if, if it's even um, non-believers they talk about well I don't like to give money almost as if like I'm above that I give my time or I give my talent like if I'm a really good um, uh, plumber you know oh I'm not going to tithe financially but I'm going to go and fix your toilet at the church or at um, the homeless shelter or whatever it is and somehow that um, for some people they try and make an equivalency to giving financially versus giving um, time or or like I'm going to build a set of stairs for this church what do you guys think about that where does that fit for you for me, I, I think about the, some of the folks that I know give, uh, they think you can tithe, designate your tithe, in other words. You can give, uh, give it to this project or that project. And I've always looked at tithing as, go, I, just give, I just give that amount to the general fund is where that, that goes. I have put no strings on it. And I'm, I'm amazed at the, at, at the number of Christians who believe that they can give their tithe by purchasing this for the church or that for the church and say that's their tithe. I just have never seen it that, like that because I've always understood that the tithe was the first part of, 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 of what God says, and, he, and it's a money, just a money thing. Although one I have from time to time held up a $5 bill or a $10 bill. One day I think I held up a $50 bill and I said, well, what is this? And they said, right, they could see right off that it was a $50 bill. I said, well, well, but yeah, but what is it? And I finally got them to the point where I said, this is, this is $50 worth of you hmm. or $50 worth of my, my time. It, it took $50 worth of my time to get this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think there's a definite um, value to the, what is it the the time and the talent um but i guess i th i think biblically we should be doing all three you know like that that's that's certainly appropriate i don't think it's an appropriate substitution and um certainly people are in places where they they are you know on a fixed income and and maybe want to do more and they can't do more financially so they you know want to give extra in a certain way as an offering to God, that's, that's a wonderful thing, but I don't think it's a substitute because again, um, it could be well-intentioned. It could also be something where it's keeping them from dealing with the idolatry of money that has that grip on our hearts it, very easily. So, so I think, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a, a legitimate way to go. I think whether it's tithing or not, God calls us to use our gifts, you know, and some people are gifted in giving, but all of us are supposed to give just like some are gifted in evangelism, but all of us are supposed to share our faith. So there's certainly uh, um, some, some gradations in there and giftedness, but God gave us gifts to use for the building up of the body. And I think that's different than our tithes and our offerings. Um, yeah, there's a great, great, go ahead. I was just going to say it's in the same ballpark of like Mike says, um, um, Mike Wilson says of who we are and representing who we are, but there's still different categories within that bigger set, you know, so go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, there's a great, the great parable Jesus uh, or story Jesus gave uh, in, a, it's not story. There's a story in the Bible of an interaction, which is the, the rich young ruler found in Luke 18, mm -hmm. 18 to 23, where he, um, you know, this rich young ruler comes up and says, you know, what do I need to do to, to, to follow you, to be right with you, to, 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 you know, be about the things of importance of life. And um, Jesus says, well, you know, follow the 10 commandments, which are a lot of giving to, you know, uh, uh, being generous, those kind of things. And with our stuff and our things and, and the young ruler says, yeah, I've done all that. You know, mm -hmm. all my actions have been there. And then Jesus looks at him and says, go sell everything you have and follow me. Give and you want the guy to, okay, I sold this, everything and follow Jesus. No, he turns away and walks away because it says he had so much. Mm -hmm. And because his treasure was, was his stuff. 
And when our treasure is our stuff and that, then yeah, we look at ways of to how not to give. So each person has to ask themselves, why, why do you do that? Why are you mm-hmm. looking to replace the money with something else? And, and where is your heart in it? Again, it's about your heart. And of course, God doesn't, you know, well, I don't have enough money. How can I give? And I don't have enough money to eat. Well, you know what? Start with a dollar. You know, can you work? You know, and then you find out that, you know, well, they go to Starbucks and get a $6 coffee every week. Well, maybe stop doing that once a week and start giving that way and work up to it mm-hmm. and, and, and begin to start the practice of, of learning to give. Um, and that takes, you know, because we, we're, we're, we tend to be stingy. You know, just, I want to keep everything to myself, people. And start small. Work it out. Just begin to start giving and give of those things that are really valuable to you, like your money and your time and your talent and your treasure. You know, those yeah. Are, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's I think that's a good it again. It goes back to the heart of where we're at with that. And that's that's the key in there. Can I chime in real quick on that that rich young ruler passage? Just um, I think this is really important for us who teach, but also for any of us who read the Bible. Like we're very quick to explain that away. Of Jesus was revealing the idol of his heart, but he doesn't mean that for us, you know. And for some people, he probably does, you know. So so I think we we are quick to to um, contextualize the hard sayings of Jesus without letting them really drill on us and say, is that me? Um, and I think that's a challenge for any of us, both as teachers, but also as we're reading and, and in the word. So I, it just, just a quick aside, like, I know, I know it's easy for me to like, so I don't lose people. I might say, you know, this is what he was revealing with this guy. Now, what does this mean for you? And I'm, I might need to say, here's what he's talking to this guy. This might be some of you. It might be me. Um, before we move to what else idols it might apply to, or how do we talk about giving in light of this? Um, we need to let the hard stuff hit us before we, we try to move on. So anyways, that, that was and just, I, and a, I, think, I think one of the, you, you touched on it earlier, Justin and, 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 and Micah as well about us who preach and teach. You know, I remember I sat down with a group of pastors and I just said, how much do you give? <laughs> and the room went completely silent. Silent. And, um, and then I got the, I give of my time. I give of my energies. I am serving God every day. I said, but what about your money? And I just thought, oh, my gosh. And, I mean, it's uh, talk about, you know, guys looking down their shoes and, and not <laughs> checking the watch. Among the pastors, this, this is a tough subject. Mm. Because Isn't that they, a shame? They give so much that they they can't get, and they don't get paid enough and all that kind of stuff. So I mean that's I mean Christy and I made it a a, a deal about that and and um, you know if anyone wants to know how much I'll give I'll tell them I mean it's it, it's a it is a private matter but I'm happy to share that with them because um, we're 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 learning along the way we 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 tie then and plus some like I said I don't know the exact percentage but and it took a while to get there but it it, it it's uh it's there's such a joy and a hilarity in being able to give and um and and you know like i said i'm sort of learning how to do it sacrificially but it's it we need to teach that to ourselves because we have the same issue and until god grips our heart and we really understand that we're his children and in his family and this is what his family does we give and it's a good healthy practice you know sean you 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 work out a lot you're a trainer and you understand that yeah you understand the the value of consistent exercise Mm -hmm. and building muscle and this is one of those muscles that god asks us to build to work on and it's 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 you know it's it's a it's important so you know we should get at it and if you're listening and trying to figure out how much you know, try, try, try some opportunity, try and, and figure out sacrificial, get some counsel from someone and, and, and interact with that and just keep trying that consistency. And you will see some amazing things happen. Like what, um, Mike Wilson said a little bit ago, you know, test, the, matter of fact, God even says, test the Lord at this. Yes. See if he does not just blow the doors open. I mean, there's been times in my life when Christy and I were dirt poor, we could hardly afford the next meal. But we never stopped giving, and God provided miraculously. Yeah, right, He did the same with us. Hours with stories of miraculous yeah. interventions of God. I think, um, yeah. Wilson, you had something to mention. We 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 determined 
early on uh, that we would figure the tithe before anything else. And we had bills just like everybody else did. And one of the things that God did for us was just mind boggling is when we, we first went to the church in Cyprus, um, we, we had just had, we had one baby and, and another one wasn't too long after that, but um, we, our, our, our dryer went belly up on us and we had to go spend $252 at, at uh, Gemco at the time and bought a, bought a new dryer. And uh, that was $252 we just didn't have. Um, or, or it was all that we had. And it was, it was interesting, a couple of days later, they, they did my ordination service at my father-in-law's church down in Santa Ana, and they gave us a money tree. Hmm. Uh, and the, uh, we tie money on, on these dead branches. And the amount was two hundred and fifty-two dollars. That's awesome. I've I've never questioned God at all about money since then. Yep. He 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 just continually blows the doors off. You know, and I, and I think to as we kind of get close to wrapping up this conversation, something that I wanted to share, and maybe for those of you listening, uh, you might be like me. That's it's hard to to tithe. It's hard to plan that, especially if you know you're on a fixed income or something like that. But something that I wanted to share that maybe those of you listening can resonate with. Um, years, you know, maybe like ten years ago, um, you know, when I was younger, but you know, living on my own and 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 you know paying for my own rent and everything like that. I remember it was a real struggle to pay for food. To, sometimes I would, you know, for months and months, I would sleep at friends' houses um, and things like that. And I remember it being so hard to like, if I had to buy clothes, I had to really think and pray, you know, God, where, where do I get clothes? And, and I would have to be creative. I would ask friends, I would get old clothes from my parents' house and, and I would have to really wrestle with that. Now that I'm older, you know, I've, I've um, had some more steady jobs and income. Um, it's quite simple. Like the other day, I lost a pair of sandals. And instead of having the inclination to pray about it, to really think about it, to strategize, I'm like, oh, I could just go to the store and buy the nicest pair of, pan of sandals that I want. And that's an easy solution. And I, the reason why I mention that is that in a good way, I get convicted of that because it's so easy for me to not even consider or think anymore about needing to rely on God, needing to bring something basic to prayer to the Lord um, and connecting with him on something basic about food, about clothes, shoes. And that's something that God wants to intimately be involved with with our lives. And I feel like for me, again, the reason why I bring it up is when I have... Um, the money to spend. And, and again, it's not bad to work, to have money, to, to make an, an honest earning, but I got to give a gut check to my heart when I feel like I don't need God in a sense, because I could just do this on my own. I don't need God because I can pay for it and make it happen. And I'm not saying that's the attitude of my heart. I get convicted when my attitude is not immediately, God, how can we figure this out? And I think that's helpful for us when we think about money is, is that sense of autonomy. Where is the disconnect happening between us and, and needing the Lord, needing to rely on him and involve him in our lives? Yeah, and, and Sean, that is so, so perfect. And, and we ought to, all, everything we do ought to be bathed in that mm. prayer and working out, go in God's direction. But I also think we need to, not but, it, but we should also in that, um, look at the practices of learning how to handle the resources God has given us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we have what we have by the hand of God and we have what we don't have by the hand of God as well. And so, we need to be good stewards, good managers, and learn how to budget well, learn how to be wise with our finances. Like, you know, it may not be the wisest thing to go, like, you you, you know, you were kind of forced into some um, frugality practices, and, and me, yeah. us too, Christy and I too, when we were, yeah. when we were first starting out. And, really and, and we learned to be, how to stretch that dollar, ooh, you know, even more so, uh, and how to be wise with what we do have so that we have money to be able to give. And I think that that's some, you know, something like a Dave Ramsey, uh, other, that's a, a financial guy. I think, Sean, you can maybe put a link to their ministry in there, but it, it, it's a, uh, um, 
a great, one of the things that, that that ministry does is it teaches people how to budget and just how to, you know, because you can't spend more than you take in. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the biggest problems today is, is consumer debt. That, yeah. And I think on that, on that note, uh, Pastor Mike McKay, I think for, we should actually just um, end the conversation here because for those of you listening, we're really getting onto some good things that again, are practical budgeting debt. What does it look like to purchase nice things as Christians, as believers, this whole series that we're going to be in, in, uh, in the next handful of weeks is on stewardship. So we encourage you, those of you who are listening, tune in next time. Share this podcast with a friend, someone who, who you know who might be struggling with finances or money or have questions about money and tithing. Share this episode with them and tune in next time as we continue to unpack um, what Mike McKay was just talking about. But, uh, but before we go, I just wanted to ask any last thoughts from you guys before we end this podcast. No, I mean, there's so much, so many thought, like you just summarized it well, there's so many different directions yet to go. So um, I don't think I have anything to add for today, um, but I can't wait to keep talking as the weeks continue. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much, uh, all three of you pastors, Mike Wilson, especially for being a special guest uh, uh, at our service yesterday on Sunday, but also today on our podcast. Really special to have you here. Also, Pastor Mike McCain, Justin, so good to have you guys as always. And thank you, our audience, for joining us on our Revive podcast. Like we said, please share this episode with a friend or subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all our latest conversations. Like we said, this um, series on stewardship is going to be going on. So please tune in next week uh, for the continued conversation. Um, You can find more information about our church uh, on iTunes uh, with our podcast. Uh, also, um, you can go to neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive on our website to find more resource, uh, resources. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Just search Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos, and you can find that information there. Also, we love hearing from you guys. Seriously, email us, call us, come to our service. It's great to hear from you. And especially if you have questions for what we're talking about, if, if something was confusing, or even if you had an aha moment and you're like, yeah, this really makes sense. We want to hear that so much. So if you have something like that, please email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. And we'll hear from you that way. And that'll be great. But until next time, we pray for you guys and we pray that God revives your soul. Have a great day.